Today, we're going to tell you about an application that we built to replace our legacy claims intake application. So we had some requirements to replace this existing application that's about 15 years old. So it's built on uh, HTML technology that was meant to work with Internet Explorer 5, right? So um, very exciting. We get to replace something ancient. Um, one of the important reasons that we need to do this, though, is because the existing implementation does not give enough notice to the business when really important loss events happen. So if somebody's house burns down, it could be a million-dollar event, but it could take up to a day for the entire business to find out that this really important thing happened. It goes through the claim system, all of the notes are taken, finally an adjuster looks at it. We want that notice to happen as soon as the claim is taken. Additionally, there may be some subrogation opportunities that we want to start looking at immediately. So, for example, um, if one of our insureds was hit by uh, a bus, we want to try to get the money from the person who caused the accident as soon as possible, because that, that saves our business. Additionally, um, we're in the Midwest, Indianapolis. I think yesterday it was referred to as prairie or flyover country. That's where we're from. Um, we have tornadoes. So if a tornado hits, that could create a catastrophic event. We want to be able to scale up our claims taking, taking application to account for that. As long as we're making these changes, we also want to simplify our loss-taking process, first of all, so that it's easier to train our loss-takers to use, and secondly, so that we can provide better customer experience through the loss-taking process. Finally, we have requirements with um, our organization to implement our new front-end technology stack, which is based on Angular. So all of these things needed to be taken account for rebuilding this. So uh, the title of our talk is uh, Using Komuna to Build a Modern Web Application. So I, I want to do a little bit of level setting to explain legacy versus modern. So in a legacy application, you have something like a, a JSP or ASP, where the presentation logic, uh, the presentation and the business logic are just completely locked together. There's no way to create additional client interfaces because there, you've, you've just coupled these different responsibilities together in a way that can never be broken. In a modern web application, the front end uh, frequently works as a single page application and it communicates to the back end using services. And uh, most or all of the business logic is handled at that application or service layer separately from the presentation layer. Uh, I mentioned that the existing application that we're replacing was built for Internet Explorer 5 back when ActiveX was still being used. So we want to avoid putting any legacy technologies in our new work. No Flash, no ActiveX. We want to focus on 2019 and into the future, because we, we want this application to be able to last in production for a good while without running into those risks of uh, legacy technologies. Uh, and I'm sorry to say, uh, doing our evaluation, we also didn't want to use Komunda Forms, because that still kind of puts that user interface and BPM responsibility in the same spot. So we wanted to have this unlimited freedom to implement our client. So the solution was to uh, definitely seems like BPM for us. And then the front end in our uh, organization, anything that is fronting any of the services is single pane application, and it's or uh, Angular in our organization. So we know BPM is the one that's going to solve the problem because we know all the advantages of BPM, but we wanted to keep the front end and the back end as separated as possible. And if you go look at all the BPM platforms, if you research about it, you end up seeing forms IO or you know, using forms within BPM. That was no solution for us, because for Indiana Form Bureau, customer experience is the most central part. We wanted to make sure, no matter whether we're using mobile app or front-end application, we wanted our process to be the same. We don't want to be changing the back-end and the front-end all together. 
So basically, uh, I want to give you a little bit of background. When we were looking at various platforms like APN, Bisagi, Bonita Soft, and Kamunda, um, the one thing that stood out with us with Kamunda was the REST engine, how uh, the well-documented REST engines, how we can build a decoupled architecture with Kamunda's REST engine. But that was not enough. There was lack of documentation of how we can clearly segregate the Angular application from the backend. We wanted to give full flexibility to front-end developers uh, and UI UX developers because they don't want to be bogged down by Kamunda's version compatibilities with Angular and all those stuff. So thanks to Brent Rooker's uh, one blog that helped us, that sparked an idea that, you know, how we can decouple front-end uh, with the back-end. I'll get to it pretty soon. But before that, the main stepping um, elements for these architecture is we have a parent process, we have a sub-process, there is a gateway, and there is a user interface. So this is our architecture. Basically, as I told, there is a user interface. There is a gateway in between. This is the most important element of uh, our architecture, because that helps us separate front end with the back end. And we have parent processes, sub-processes, DMNs, and all those stuff in Kamunda. So the, basically, the user interface communicates with a gateway. Gateway is nothing but a very light Spring Boot application deployed in Tomcat, fronting the Kamunda's REST engine. I will dig deeper in a couple of minutes. And then gateway communicates with the parent process. The parent process is nothing but that orchestrates all the uh, components that are in a process. And then uh, Kamunda processes the logic. And it calls various different database systems it need be, and then sends the res response back to the gateway, and the gateway responds back to the user interface. So before I get into the gateway, I want to give a little bit more um, insight into our architecture. So parent process is nothing but a process uh, specifically dedicated for orchestration. This does not deal with any of the business logic. It does not communicate with any databases or, you know, uh, I mean, the database in the sense any uh, RDB, I mean, SQL servers or anything like that. It is just calling sub-processes, like just a bunch of call activities, maybe a little bit of script. All that it does is call a bunch of sub-processes in a particular order. So you can think of it as like a Lego block. Like, you can reorder those blocks in any way you want. And um, the sub-processes is what take care, takes care of business implementation. So uh, our application here is first notice of loss. In this case, say, the first thing they do, uh, we, when we get a first notice of loss, we ask them, hey, who is the reporter? So parent process is the one that tells the front end, hey, ask for who is the reporter now. But then uh, the front end actually collects all that information and sends it back. And sub-process is responsible for taking that information, putting it in the database, or calling any other services, or going into the wait states. So because of this decoupling between, I mean, uh, integration between the parent and sub-process, we could completely utilize the Kamunda's cockpit to analyze what are the steps that are really useful and what are the steps are useless, and where we are wasting the customer's time by asking irrelevant questions and asking through the, uh, I mean, taking them through irrelevant screens. We were, uh, the business analyst and the Kamunda developers were able to use the cockpit to its full potential to um, make our system more better. So just to reiterate what we showed you, we've implemented a consistent architectural pattern where we have a parent process whose only responsibility is orchestration. Um, it does some state management for the front end as well, but principally it's there to orchestrate between the sub-processes. These have the role of implementing any uh, business-related BPMNs, or if necessary, making calls to various services and handling uh, storage or... Um, service calls. Yeah, service calls. So that's, that's what we're um, doing with the first notice of loss app. Yeah. So basically, um, I, I keep talking about you know, Gateway being the central here. 
So let's dig deep into it. So basically, the front end doesn't know that the BPM uh, can be started by a slash start REST API. It doesn't know that the BPM is going into a wait state. It doesn't know any of the complexities of the uh, you know, Kamunda engine. So basically, all the, all, all the responsibility of abstracting the REST engine is in the hands of Gateway. So basically, front end sends, hey, there is a first notice of loss request came in. Gateway, take this request. So Gateway translate that into starting the business process. So the front end doesn't even know that a business process is getting started there. So basically, Gateway creates a business key. Business key is very central for us because, as I told you, there is parent process that spans a lot of sub-processes. We want to have an end-to-end -end view of it. So business key ties all those parent processes and the sub-processes. And then um, Kamunda actually takes that request and then does all the processing it does. It calls the appropriate sub-process and then returns back a response which is pretty uh, cumbersome. You will have, if you have worked with Kamunda, uh, you would know the REST API returns all the variables that is in the process. And Frontend definitely does not care about all the variables that Kamunda has used for processing. So Gateway actually trims down the response, and it makes it beautiful so that the Frontend can just take the information that it needs and paint their screens beautifully. The front end is a single page application implemented in Angular. And when the user uses this application, it's like this long multi-step wizard. So if you have a home claim, it might be 11 steps. If you have an auto claim, depending on whether it's something simple, uh, your car broke down and you need a tow, that might only be five or six steps. Or if it's a more complicated ordeal, like a multi-vehicle accident, that could be many more steps. So we do not want to have the order or sequence or anything like that in the front end, because that makes it very difficult to change. So what we've designed is that the front end has no information about what was the previous screen. It has no information about the next screen. The user goes through each process step by step, fills in the information that they need for that screen, they click a Next button, and that sends a payload to the BPM that has all of the information that the subprocess needs. And then the subprocess may have some uh, variables that the parent processes you use to determine what the following step is. When the front end receives a payload from the BPM, it has a payload that has a list of actions in it plus any data necessary or required for the user to complete their action. The action IDs are actually taken from uh, user tasks as those IDs. And any of the payload is generated from the subprocess. On the user interface side, we have a table that maps actions to components. So for example, if we receive a list of actions, and that action includes the policy selection, we know on the front end we have to show the policy selection component. When the policy selection component loads, it receives whatever payload it needs, uh, a list of the user's policies. The um, claims intake person would then select one of the policies, click Next, and that would send back to the BPM to make the next decision about which screen to show. In some cases, there are multiple actions. So if you, if you Im imagine in the uh, BPMN, there could be a parallel gateway where a user might make one of two choices. Both of those will have a user task. That wait state will send those IDs back to the front end. And in some cases, we might need one component that can handle either of those scenarios. That's all right. We could say for when these actions happen, use this combined component that will um, handle either of those cases. The user still fills in their information, clicks Next, and it resolves just like the previous screen does. So basically, we recorded a small uh, you know, session about how we uh, go about uh, communicating back and forth with Angular, because we've been talking a lot. It's hard to find, uh, put the brain around that. So basically. Uh, 
So this is the first notice of loss screen that we have built where the front end is completely decoupled from the back end. So the here user is searching for a reporter in the system. The front end selects the system and sends next. When there, when there is next, the front end doesn't even know that it has to load this screen, which is collecting the lost data and time. This is coming from the back end saying that, hey, load the screen. And then Angular collects the information and then clicks on next. Even at this point, Angular doesn't know. The BPM sends that component uh, action ID that Karina was talking about. So in this case, uh, BPM is uh, saying that, hey, ask if the reporter that yeah. you have selected is also an insured. Could you pause for a moment? I just yeah. want to explain something on the screen. Yeah. So in, in our particular implementation, it's possible to get to the insured client search screen without having known who the reporter is. So when the list of actions come back for this screen, that mapping knows all of these are possible actions. But if this action is, is missing, then don't show this part of the user interface. The BPM never has to know any of those sorts of details. Uh, but the front end doesn't have to know why the BPM cares. All we need to know is if this action is available, show this part of the user interface. So our approach, this architecture, has some really good benefits for development teams. The way that we're structured, we have a, a group that specializes more on uh, Komunda development and a group that focuses more on Angular development. And the only thing that our groups really need to agree on are the contracts between the subprocesses and the components. Angular developers don't have to know a lot about Komunda, and Komunda developers don't need to know a lot about Angular. That lets us focus on our competencies while still advancing the project. Um, our user interface, in this case, is Angular. But with this architecture, we have plans, potentially, of implementing loss notice for Android or for Apple. And as long as those adhere to the same contract that we defined, it will work the same with the back end, regardless of the front end. Finally, um, community developers are able to, uh, sorry, the whole, all of the developers are able to use the cockpit. And that has been one of our most important troubleshooting tools. So additionally, there are some great benefits for the business. They're free to come up with any requirements without having to take into account any BPM constraints. As long as the user interface is able to accomplish it, business can dream as large as they want. Additionally, business can change the order of how screens get filled in. They can add new screens easily without having to make, uh, and often without having to make any front end changes at all. So I'd like to give you a specific case that, where we did just that. About a month before we were going to launch, I guess six weeks about before we were going to launch into production, business came to us and they said, we have been looking at the product in QA. We realized that we want to change the order of these screens. It makes more sense to our business to get this information first. Having done this in other applications where these, the ordering is set into the front end, they had of experience with that. So they said, we know the change that we want you to make. We know from experience that should take you about four weeks to do. So we're going to have to move out some more time. Sami and I, having some confidence in, in the design that we'd been working on, said, um, we don't think it'll take four weeks. We think it, maybe it'll take a week. And I think we finished it in a, just a Three couple days, of days. Probably. Yeah. So um, we were able to exceed our business's expectations by three weeks. Okay, uh, so far we have been showing you, you know, how we used Komunda to guide the users. Basically, uh, if we look at our workflow, we collect all the information, and then suddenly the, all the screens come in parallel. So basically, we've, the user can validate all the data that has been entered so far, so they can make changes if they want before they submit and uh, submit to the database. So before submitting the loss uh, notice, the loss taker has an opportunity to review the data by going with simultaneous workflow. The parent process, the same parent process that takes you through the guided workflow also takes you through this uh, multiple sub-processes. 
Uh, the front end gets a list of action rather than one action at a time. So basically, instead of saying, hey, show the screen, next show the screen, you say, hey, show these screens all at one time, and user can make um, changes to any components in any order they want. So to summarize, um, the gateway pattern is central to this. Basically, it uh, abstracts the complexities of the um, Kamunda engine from front end. Basically, if I have asked you know, all my front end developers to come and you know, develop forms and integrate with Kamunda, probably they would have given me a very hard time. And uh, we also would have struggled to find talent you know, where we could clearly get good user experience. You know? Uh, so we can develop native apps and all those stuff. So this parent and sub-process pattern, basically, as Kamunda, uh, I mean, as Karana said, I'm so much into Kamunda. <laughs> as Karana said, you can reorder the screens as much as you want, and tomorrow we can build a mobile app. We can create a different experience for them. So for if you look at uh, adjusters, they will have a different kind of uh, screens. They have to, we prompt them to ask different questions. We prompt them to read disclaimers. But then when it's a customer, the screens and the screens that we display will be totally different. In that case, we would only change the parent process. The sub-processes are all reusable. So the amount of effort that we have to put on the back end is drastically reduced. And to summarize that action component mapping, today it's Angular. Um, tomorrow it can be anything. So suppose uh, we want to move from Angular to React, we can do that easily. And obviously, we can reap all the benefits of Kamunda without any UI dependencies. Thank you.